Women often express their feelings through needlework. It is like an unspoken language that reflects their sense of responsibility, persistence and affection. Because needlecraft is passed down from mother to daughter, it is also called the mother's art. It is filled with a love of life and is deeply rooted in people's hearts. This is Tian Ruolan. She lives in Anxia City, Hubei province. This Tuja ethnic village in the mountainous region of western Hubei is her hometown. She comes back here several times a month. Her parents and relatives still live here as they prefer not to move to the city. The fabric she is holding is Shilang Kapu, also known as Tuja Brocade, an important dowry made by Tuja women when they get married. The wedding song Ruolan's mother is singing expresses the bride's gratitude and devotion to her parents. In the song, the bride goes to her husband's home, taking with her the two job brocade that she wove herself. As well as visiting her parents, Ruolan has something important to do whenever she comes back, collecting Tuja brocades. She hopes to preserve these traditional patterns, which have become rare today. As a Tuja woman, Ruolan has one lasting regret. She didn't have Tuja brocade with her when she got married, as the art was disappearing in many families when she was growing up. In the Tuja language, Xilan Kapu means bedding with patterns. It is filled with natural images and geometric patterns, of which the 48 hooks is the most popular. Hook patterns fit neatly into each other, signifying that all the difficulties the bride will face in the future will be overcome and she will have a happy marriage. Many Tuja girls want to have a piece of Tuja brocade that they have woven themselves when they get married. According to Tuja tradition, as soon as a girl is able to reach the footboard while sitting on the loom, she has to start learning to weave Tuja brocade in preparation for marriage. However, learning the craft is not easy. Ruolan is demonstrating how to weave this kind of brocade on a traditional loom. The raw materials are silk, cotton and linen threads. The brocade has three layers of warp on which the weft forms the patterns. The weft is fixed after it passes through the warp. Good hand and foot coordination is essential to weaving a perfect piece. This 
，一只手也要拉扣，另外一只手拉梭子，再把它交换过来。刚开始学的时候，第一个是那个线缠束很难踩开。第二个呢，就梭子拿不起，穿不过去，还有一不小心这个竹筒就会掉下去，稀里哗啦，这里也在响，那里也在响。Learning to weave two-jaw brocade from her mother is the warmest memory Royalan has of her childhood. Ten years ago, she was determined to bring back two-jaw brocade due to her deep love for the art. But the complicated procedures used in the old-fashioned loom made her realize the difficulties involved in continuing the craft. In 2012, she began to improve traditional looms. This is a new loom that took Royal Lan and her colleagues more than one year to make. It makes hand weaving much easier. 比如说我穿梭子，我先脚踩下去，这个可以不拉梭子，把这层先放下去了，然后再把梭子穿过来，然后放好，再拿扣来打紧，然后再开始织。这些动作可以一个一个完成。所以他不要求那么连贯的话，就没有那样的难度了。Many Tuja girls have now started learning to weave Tuja brocade from Royal Lan, allowing this Tuja tradition to continue. Silang Kapu 的记忆啊，过去是代代相传，传了几千年，祖先传了几千年，传到我们手里。如果在我们这代人手里消失了，太遗憾了。但是非知西兰卡普的人是很少的，招收了很多很多届的那个村民啊、妇女啊，还有一些女孩子啊，都过来学，免费的教他们学。学会了愿意就业的，就可以在我这里就业；愿意在家里织的，也可以在家里织。我觉得多教一个人，就多一份可以传播的概率。Even at the age of 80, Roland's mother still wants to learn how to use the new loom. The craft they learn in their childhood is a skill they will remember their whole life. Two job brocade is like a wedding dress. The only difference is that it is made by the bride herself and will be passed down to future generations. Today, this can only be seen in a museum. It is a sewing kit used by women a century ago. The ingenious design allows women to store commonly used objects inside. The sewing kit was usually passed on among the women in a family. Their outstanding needlecraft skills would also serve to strengthen the bonds between family members. In an old county deep in Luliang Mountain, there is another handicraft that takes place in the kitchen. The women of Lansheng excel at making dough flowers, also known as flower buns or dough sculptures. When cooking wheaten food, flour can serve as both food and decoration. For the local women, dough sculpturing is a demonstration of their ingenuity. All these dough sculptures are made by Yuan Jianhua. Jianhua was not born locally. When she got married and moved to Lansheng over 20 years ago, this place was very poor. When I came to my house, I didn't eat any of the food. I lived in the house, it was all gone.
Jianhua tried her hand at many jobs, but eventually found prosperity through dough sculptures, the skill she learned in her childhood. The key to making perfect dough sculptures is using the right proportion of water and flour, so these artists are usually masters of making wheat and food. 30 years of experience brings about the perfect texture for the dough. To make the dough sculptures plump and easy to shape, the dough needs to be highly elastic and she has to knead the dough 2,500 times. In Lanxian County, dough sculpture is also an important folk activity. Each year, on the 19th day of the second lunar month, the county holds a ceremony for people to pray for good fortune for their families. As the ceremony is themed on dough sculptures, all the women in the county are busy making preparations. After shaping the dough, the women use water to stick each part together. The sculpture's final shapes are fixed through steaming. While the women are busy with their dough sculptures, the men are responsible for creating a festive atmosphere. This house was rebuilt four years ago. Jianhua's home has undergone tremendous changes, which she attributes to her skill with dough sculptures. Jianhua's eyesight is not as strong as it was, so her daughter Lily works as her assistant. As a new mother, Lily has been learning the skill for four years. For her, dough sculpture represents a mother's love for her children. While it earns an income for the family, Jianhua's passion for dough sculpture comes from her special affinity for wheat. She and her daughter still maintain the tradition of colouring the sculptures after steaming them, as these flower buns can still be eaten after the outer layer is peeled off. Lanxian County's annual worship ceremony takes place tomorrow. Jianhua and her daughter are assembling their works. To them, each dough sculpture is a test of their household skills. At about six in the morning, the small town is teeming with activity. Dough sculptures made by women from different households are all on display. The worship ceremony is a stage for women to show off their skills, and their dough sculptures fill that stage with colour, bearing witness to their diligence. Their painstaking efforts are not for their own benefit, but symbolise a woman's sense of responsibility and love for their family.
一九九年，我老公就去世了，就剩我一个人嘛，还有两个老人跟我，还有五个孩子。Wei Tao Hua was only 33 years old at the time. The burden of raising the family fell squarely on her shoulders. Luckily, when she was young, she learned an amazing craft from her mother, horsetail embroidery. With this skill, Tao Hua was able to support the entire family. Taohua lives in Sandu County, Guizhou Province. It is China's only Shui ethnic group autonomous county. 210,000 Shui people live here. Shui children are brought up in the baby carriers on their mother's back. To Shui women, the baby carrier not only frees their hands, but also symbolizes a mother's love. Before a woman gets married, her mother will make her a baby carrier with horsetail embroidery on it as a dowry. The museum in Sandu County houses a collection of a hundred year old baby carriers made with horsetail embroidery. Though the bottoms of these baby carriers are now worn out, the patterns and outlines are still clear even after years of use. It takes several years to finish a baby carrier with horsetail embroidery. Because they are so precious, mothers only use them for important occasions. On a hillside in Sandu County, men pick out the best horses for a race. The Shui people have a custom of raising and racing horses. To them, the horse is a divine animal. When a man dies, his family must slaughter a horse in his honor. The women will then twine silk thread around horsetail hairs to make thread for embroidering, which is how horsetail embroidery got its name. Tao Hua is demonstrating how to make a horsetail thread. Horsetail hairs contain grease, which makes the silk thread glossy and durable. Nowadays, Tao Hua's horsetail embroidery works have become a calling card for Guizhou province. Her outstanding creations are heavily reliant on her stunning drawing skills. Tao Hua uses the horsetail thread to outline the main patterns based on her design, then fills in the gaps with colorful silk threads. She then decorates the work with metal sequins. The resulting horsetail embroidery looks like a relievo.
horsetail embroidered baby carriers represent a mother's hope for her children. Tao Hua and her family have now moved into a new house in the county town. She also runs a horsetail embroidery company. Horsetail embroidery has changed her life. Three of her five sons are married and have their own kids. Though her daughters-in-law's mothers have given them horsetail embroidered baby carriers, she still gave each of them one baby carrier she embroidered herself. Shu Ben Wen is preparing a baby carrier for her one year old daughter, Dodo. Though her daughter is still too young for it, Ben Wen is very keen to make one because her love for Dodo is contained in each and every single stitch. Taohua, Ben Wen and Dodo, three generations are emotionally connected by a baby carrier. Ruo Lan and Jian Hua also express their love for their families through their own particular crafts. Mothers are the same all over the world. Although objects wear out over time, family memories are like the horsetail embroidered baby carrier that carried Tao Hua's five sons. Even if the cloth and threads become undone, their mother's love continues to hold. <laughs>